In today's video, we're going to be talking about a deviated nasal septum. So the septal nasal cartilage is this structure in the nose which is made up of hyaline cartilage. It helps to separate the right and left nasal passage. It also helps to keep the nasal passages narrow to allow the passage of air. It looks like this, and anteriorly we have the nasal bone, below is the maxilla and vomer, and then distally we have the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. A deviated nasal septum is a physical disorder where the septum is off-center or crooked, and this can result in nasal obstruction which can cause a number of uncomfortable symptoms. So the cause of a deviated nasal septum it can be present at birth, it could occur through fetal development or maybe some kind of injury during childbirth. It may be hereditary, so it could be genetically linked. It could be caused by injury to the nose, especially in those who play contact sports like boxing. To be honest, this is the most common cause. And lastly, it could be caused by some kind of tumour, polyp or mass in the nose, which is pushing the nasal septum to one side. Key symptoms of a deviated nasal septum include obstruction, usually of at least one of the nostrils, which causes a blocked nose. This may result in noisy and difficult breathing. There may be some cases of recurrent sinusitis or nosebleeds, and patients may also report facial pain additionally. A deviated nasal septum can involve any age or gender. Generally, males are more commonly affected than females. Unfortunately, a deviated nasal septum can often go undiagnosed and unnoticed because the symptoms often align with the common cold or sinusitis. But there are a few different types of deviated nasal septum. We have the first, which is known as anterior dislocation. This is where the septal cartilage may be dislocated into one of the nasal chambers. We have the C-shaped. This is where the septum is deviated in a simple curve to one side. We have the S-shaped. The septal cartilage has this S-shaped curve and this can cause bilateral nasal obstruction. We also have the fourth type which is called spurs and these are like these shelf-like projections which are often at the junction of the bone and the cartilage. It can be uncomfortable and it can press against the nasal wall causing headaches and nosebleeds. And the last type we're going to talk about is the thickening of the nasal septum often occurring due to injury and this is what's causing obstruction of the nasal passages. To diagnose a deviated nasal septum, your doctor will conduct an examination in your nose with a light. Often these deviations can be visible when checking inside each nostril. Your doctor will take a detailed medical history and ask you about the symptoms you're experiencing. There is a test to check for a deviated nasal septum and it's called the Cottle's test. This is where a hand is used to pull your cheek backwards on the side of the blockage. If the airway opens up slightly and breathing improves, the problem is located more anteriorly towards the front. If there's no change, then that means the blockage, which could be a deviation, is located further back in the nose. The treatment options for a deviated nasal septum depends on how severe it is. If it's a very minor deviation, often no treatment is needed, especially when it doesn't cause symptoms. It's advised to use nasal decongestants, saline rinses and steroid nasal sprays to help reduce inflammation and to see if that helps to manage symptoms. One treatment option is called a septoplasty. This is where the nasal septum is straightened by trimming, repositioning and replacing the cartilage of the septum. It isn't an invasive surgery, it's usually done under local anaesthetic and it's quite conservative. It involves removing the deviated portion, trimming and straightening the remaining septal cartilage. In more severe cases, a procedure known as submucosal resection is done which involves anaesthetic and then separating the nasal cartilage from its lining, which is called the mucoperichondrium. The deviated portion of the septum is then removed and the lining is stitched back together and a splint is placed to help retain the shape. That's all we're going to discuss in today's video for a deviated nasal septum. If you have any questions relating to septal deviation, feel free to comment and I'll do my best to get back to you. Comment the 100 emoji if you've made it all the way to the end of the video. Thanks for watching.